Welcome to the Steel City. The day before Pittsburgh's beloved football team plays in Super Bowl 43. The undercard, if you will, for sports fans in this town. Big East basketball today from the Peterson Event Center as the third-ranked Pitt Panthers welcome a desperate Notre Dame Fighting Irish team. College basketball on ESPN presented by Five Hour Energy. The Panthers needing a win to stay near the top of the Big East standings. The sliding Irish have dropped four straight. Pitt started the year 16-0, 2-2 in its last four, including a loss this week to Villanova. Surprisingly, Notre Dame on the second page of our Big East standings, tied for 11th in the conference. Today is their fifth straight game against the ranked team. Hi, everyone. Alongside Len Elmore, I'm Dave Pash. So four straight losses, Lenny, for Notre Dame. Are they in must-win territory, even though it's only the end of January? Well, how's this for perspective? Before the season, most people thought that 9-9 nine and nine in conference play would put you in the NCAA tournament conversation. And Notre Dame at 3-5, and five, a loss today makes that climb back that much steeper. The Irish have to play like the future's uncertain, and the end is always near. Well, Luke Heron Goatee has played great, Len, even during this four-game losing streak. He's featured in our Star Watch along with Pitts. DeJuan Blair. Well, Luke Harangote leads the conference in scoring and rebounding. 28 points, 15 rebounds in conference games alone. And DeJuan Blair outstanding in the paint, averaging almost six offensive rebounds a game. Looking at our starting lineups for Notre Dame. McAlarney has struggled the last two games. Notre Dame needs him to shoot it well today. Heron Gody, of course, Luke Zeller, Jonathan Peoples, and Torrey Jackson running the point. For Pittsburgh, Levance Fields, the veteran from Brooklyn, along with Jermaine Dixon, Tyrell Biggs, Dewan Blair, and Sam Young, who's Pitt's leading scorer at just under 19 points per game. And there is maybe the world's biggest Steeler fan, Dewan Blair, who Grew up here in Pittsburgh, went to Shenley High School, led them to a state championship a couple of years ago. He grew up about 600 yards from the Pittsburgh campus. And it'll be a offensive slash defensive line tight battle between Dewan Blair and big Luke Heron Gody, the top two rebounders in the Big East Conference. The Oakland Zoo is ready. So is John Cal, Jim Haney, and James Brading. And so are we. Pitt basketball to start. Notre Dame opening up in zone. Mike Gray told us that they would play a lot of zone, even though he thinks this team's primarily a man-to-man -man team. Biggs will take the jump shot. And Young try to get to the loose ball, and it will go to Notre Dame. Jamie Dixon. Got his 150th win recently, the fastest ever at Pittsburgh. He is 27 and 9 as the head coach at Pitt. After a loss, the Panthers fell to Villanova earlier this week. Pittsburgh obviously in man to man and forcing a long contested jump shot. And they're going to look to extend, try to make sure that Notre Dame doesn't get their shooters open in transition. Here's Fields into the lane, can't get the roll. Blair, the top offensive rebounder in college basketball, sticks it back in. Well, he just has an uncanny knack of getting in the right place at the right time. He works at it. Well, two three-point attempts by Notre Dame. The first one doesn't go for McElhinney, but Zeller steps up. He's making his fourth start of the year, had eight points in the loss to Marquette earlier this week. And McElarney was 6 of 27, 4 of 14 from 3 the last two games. Another offensive rebound for Pittsburgh. Look at Blair keep it alive. And Torrey Jackson, who averages five boards a game at the point guard spot, ahead to McElarney. Mike Bray told us he wanted to get out and run and get into a rhythm, and they're in it early. Well, the thing about getting out and run for Notre Dame is the ability to get the ball to the shooters in transition. Defenses slow back, get into the paint to protect the basket. And Notre Dame knocks them down from beyond the arc. Jackson with a rebound. Bray said he scrimmaged more this week than he had in the past, just wanting to reinstill confidence in his basketball team and what they can do in transition. Peoples will try the three. Aaron Goaty with the offensive rebound and the easy putback. 8-2, Irish. Long shots, long rebounds, and Jamie Dixon wants to talk about covering the board and picking up people in transition. Eight straight points by the Irish, who look like a desperate team early at the peak. The Eclipse Gum Biggie Pack, now with natural germ kill.
Fresh breath in your car. Okay. Seriously. Fresh breath at your desk. Hey, how's it going? 60 germ-killing pieces. The Eclipse Gum Biggie Pack now kills bad breath germs. Advanced fresh breath. Seriously. Great start for Notre Dame here in Pittsburgh. Well, here's the key play that Pittsburgh has to defend. In transition, Notre Dame pushes it, and everybody slows down the middle of the floor, and you got to get to the shooters early. McElarney makes them pay. McElarney and Zeller both with a made three already. Here's Jermaine Dixon. Bigs the extra pass to Blair, who has all four Panther points. Well, that's the way you attack the 2-3 zone. That sweet spot below the free throw line. And that guy in the middle reads the middle guy in the zone. Good hands by Blair to knock it out of bounds. Well, right now with DeWan Blair kind of matched up against Luke Zeller. Luke Zeller not nearly the offensive threat. Obviously, it's Luke Heron going. He takes a lot of pressure off of Blair. Jackson missed, but tipped out to Peoples by Heron going. You know, Terrell Biggs has the unenviable job of guarding Luke Heron going. Well, Luke Zeller was a McDonald's All-American, and in terms of numbers, he hasn't lived up to that hype career average of about five points per game, but maybe getting some confidence after the start and the eight points in the loss to Marquette. I think Pittsburgh will live with that shot from Zeller thinking that he won't be able to beat them. But if he gets hot, obviously he's got the ability to shoot from beyond the arc. Here's Young with a quick turnaround. Blair might have pushed off no call. Biggs with a stick back. And Notre Dame quickly up the floor. Pittsburgh back on D though. Pittsburgh getting back quickly. There's a double team on Luke Harangoti. They're not conceding anything. A lot of teams have been Satisfied in letting Harold Goody get his and covering everybody else. But with Zeller hitting the way he's hitting, obviously Pittsburgh's going to have to rethink the double team. Hard to get a hand in his face at 6 feet 11. He is 3 of 3 from three point land already in this game. Only a 32% three point shooter entering today. Here's Dixon off the bounce, a pass to Blair, and he has six of the eight Panther points. Not normally what coaches prescribe, getting up in the air and making the pass. But the defense was fooled, and they found Blair underneath. Everybody thought the shot was going up, and they're looking at the ball. Pitt has won 14 straight in this building. Notre Dame has lost four in a row here at Peterson Event Center. See, there's the double team right there. That's why Zeller is open, because the swing and the shot. Wow! Four out of four for Luke Zeller in the first four minutes. Yeah, Dwan Blair is double teaming Heron Gody, even though Zeller's his man, and Zeller just goes to the opposite side. Notre Dame, excellent job of moving the ball, swinging it around the horn. Young can't answer from three. Notre Dame by nine. Oh, well, Zeller thought about it again, but Blair got back quickly. Yeah, that's not the plan for Zeller to shoot straight up on Blair. It's to shoot it out of the double. Jackson for three. And short with that attempt. Notre Dame five of eight from behind the arc to start the game. Fields three, not there. And McElarney tracks down the loose ball. Boy, LeVance Fields had to recognize Notre Dame in man-to-man. -man. They can get a better shot than that. Pittsburgh go for two from three point land. McElarney around the Zeller screen off the mark. Heron Goody kept it alive. Zeller again. First miss of the game. Young taking Peoples off the dribble. And cleared by Heron Goody. He's going to push the tempo. Boy, a lot of quick shots by Pittsburgh. Good job by Dixon to get the ball back. And Fields takes it himself. Pittsburgh back within seven. Kind of uncharacteristic of the Panthers. One pass and a shot, if that, in the last two possessions. Meanwhile, Dixon with a steal on Heron Goody. He leads 
the league in Big East games in steals per contest. Aaron Cody firing a three, not there. Nice screen by Blair. Three on two for Notre Dame. Good job by Peoples to recognize he didn't have numbers, but he takes it anyway. Wow, another three. That's six threes already for Notre Dame. I think they listened to their coach when he said, stop being conservative, get up the floor. Well, like I said in the open, giving credit to Jim Morrison and the doors, you play like the future's uncertain and the end is always near. Notre Dame recognizes their backs are kind of up against the wall. At this point in the season, they want to stay in the NCAA tournament conversation. Isn't that life in the Big East for just about everybody? In this conference this year, as we have our first foul in the game, and that's on Dewan Blair. Anybody that's got a record below 500 for sure. Now, you take a look at Dewan Blair all the way on the left side. Got a long way to run to cover Luke Sellers. He's his man. And Notre Dame with a nice move around the horn. And Jonathan Peoples recognized there was numbers, but no one guarded him. And he drains it. How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Okay, Chad, so I choose the size of my circle, and I get to choose who's in it? Yeah, exactly, Clyde. It's like you're the team captain. Nice. Uh, speaking of which, you have one more pick. Augie, let's do this. That walker's not even legal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. My Circle, only from Alta Wireless. Enter the My Circle Hoops Getaway. Text JET to 57533. You and your circle can take a private jet to the game of your choice. Visit altelbasketball.com for details. In a changing world, who do you want by your side? A financial advisor who knows you? An advisor who understands you? An advisor who's weathered the changing world right beside you? The world may change. Our commitment to you doesn't. That's the financial relationship we call you and us. UBS. Catch Signing Day on ESPNU, Wednesday starting at 10 a.m. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. And in part by Alltel. Enter the Alltel My Circle Hoops getaway. Go to alltelbasketball.com for details. Five Super Bowl titles for the Steelers. They go for number six tomorrow night against Arizona. Meanwhile, the Pitt Panther basketball team down 10 to Notre Dame as Len takes us inside the play. Well, the key for Pittsburgh is to try to find a way to contain Luke Harangody. And here's Dewan Blair right here. He's going to go double team Luke Harangody. The problem is he's there, and his man Luke Zeller is over here somewhere. He's got to come this far to guard him as Notre Dame does a nice job of swinging the ball. Look how far Blair has to come. And Zeller, 4 of 5 from the field, 4 of 5 from beyond the arc, 12 of Notre Dame's 20 points. And that's obviously been the key of the game. Luke Zeller with some wide open looks, and he's making Pittsburgh pay. Notre Dame has six three point baskets and one two point basket. All five of Pitt's field goals have been two point baskets. Here's Blair posting up, got position on Nash, and he got fouled. That's the second Notre Dame foul, and Blair will go to the line. That foul on Nash is his first. As mentioned, Dewan Blair, a huge Steeler fan. Grew up here in Pittsburgh and graduated from Shenley High School, which uh, recently was closed because of an asbestos problem. First Pitt City League player to go play for the Panthers since Darrell Porter. He's on some of those great Pitt teams with uh, Charles Smith and Jerome Lane. Blair fourth in the country in rebounds, averaging a double-double on the season. And there's a, a Blair parents, and actually DeLon, when he was born, was the smallest of their four children, but he grew quickly. Here's Blair guarding Nash. And 
into the hands of Gilbert Brown for Pittsburgh. Fields will let it fly. And that's another Notre Dame foul because of Blair working hard on the inside. Saturday night primetime continues tonight with a battle in the SEC. Nick Kalathis and the Florida Gators against Tennessee in a similar situation as Notre Dame. Tennessee 12 and 7 on the season. Saturday night primetime presented by DirecTV tonight at 9 Eastern time. And you're right, Dewan Blair again keeping it alive on the offensive glass. Oh. He doesn't waste time watching the flight of the ball. He gets himself right to where he needs to be on the offensive glass. And they got Hillsland for the foul. He's first, third on Notre Dame. No fouls yet on Pitt. Here's Hillsland on the other end. And now they get a Panther foul. That's on Sam Young. Well, Notre Dame looking to get more diversity in their offense. It can't be just Luke Heron, Gody, and four guys named Joe. They're going to get some guys involved. Luke Zeller really established himself early. And now you're trying to get the ball back to McElarney, to Hillsland. You want guys who can put the ball in the basket to at least be threats. Well, one of the things Mike Gray did to shake things up after they lost to Connecticut a week ago is he changed the starting lineup. He said he wasn't benching Ryan Ayers and Zach Hillsland, but he just wanted to get those guys maybe to regain some confidence, take some of the pressure off them. But they did not perform well off the bench against Marquette, but Gray said he didn't want to change things up again today. We'll see how they perform off the pine in this game. Three from the corner won't go for Wanamaker at a big game against Villanova. Hit six out of seven from the floor in that loss on Wednesday. Remember, 0 for 10 from the from three point line in the second half was Pittsburgh. And they're still going after the three point shot instead of trying to go a little bit inside out. Too many one pass. Sometimes two passes and a long jump shot in the Pittsburgh offense. Blair already has six rebounds as big threes in and out. There's Blair again. Seven rebounds. And the stick back to get the Panthers within seven. And that's the only thing that gives you confidence shooting from beyond the arc. Because you got a guy like Dewan Blair underneath who can make up for your mistakes. Blair on his way to his 14th double-double as Heron Goaty misses. Wanamaker one on three. And an Irish foul, the fourth team foul on Notre Dame. That's on air is his first. Pittsburgh trailing Notre Dame by seven. Toppings, fresh baked pizzeria taste. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Score delivery pizza. <laughs> Ouch! Minus the delivery price. For fresh delivery taste without the delivery price, it's DiGiorno. How important is it that you get the right information rather than just a lot of information? Well, you know, you can roll around in facts all day long. Ouch. It's critical that we stay aware of that mountain of data that's coming in and mine it for the most valuable nuggets. It helps keep us honest. You know, these brands belong to the consumers who love them every day. If you don't understand that, you will lose your way. In a three economy, where's the safest place to invest? Your stomach? Look at the whiz kid. Wendy's Three Economics, featuring the Double Stack, one of three way better sandwiches for 99 cents each. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Two great big men squaring off in this game with Notre Dame leading by seven as we go back to the future and take a look at some of the other great big players uh, in the Big East, many of whom played at Georgetown. Of course, Charles Smith here at Pitt, who was lethal from the outside as well. And as mentioned, Heron Goaty and Blair among some terrific big men now in the Big East Conference. Well, you turn the clock forward to today, and you've got some absolutely outstanding big guys, beginning with the young player, Greg Monroe, keeping with that Georgetown tradition. Then you got defensive stars, Hashim beat the leader, blocking shots and being able to do stuff in the middle. Another young 
excellent offensive player, Samardo Samuels, high percentage shooter, Arinzi Onowaku from Syracuse, and then the two guys who are probably the most premier big men in the conference, Luke Arangoti, Big East player of the year, reigning, and Duan Blair, probably the eminent offensive rebounder in the game today. Can you compare the eras as we look at our Star Watch update? Great start for Blair. And looking at the big men of today compared to the big men of the past, which group was better? Well, to a certain extent, the guys in the past were a little bit bigger. These guys, I think, are more versatile. You look at Greg Monroe's ability to pass the ball and score inside. You look at Fabid, he may not be versatile, but he's dominant on the defensive end. Maybe a little bit like the Kembe Matumbo. But um, Aaron Godia and Dewan Blair, to me, really kind of. Um, Characterize big men today. They're not necessarily uh, classic post players, yeah. but they do a lot of things. They're not Ewing, is what you say. No, they're not. Wanamaker gets the free throws. Pittsburgh within five. But but since Patrick Ewing, who has been in the Big East? You're right. Nobody. Notre Dame has cooled off, hasn't been able to get up and down the floor like it did in the opening five minutes. They go to Heron Goaty on the post. Hillsland keeping it alive. And Heron Goaty again wins the battle. We'll give Notre Dame a lot of credit for continually battling on the boards. Heron Goaty shot off the mark. Wanamaker clears. You know, Pittsburgh a pretty good rebounding team. Almost about a plus nine. And Notre Dame not bad themselves, but what it comes down to is that they are continually trying to keep the ball alive. Get next to possession. I saw that last graphic. Dewan Blair, four or five. The rest of the team, two out of 15 from the field. Nash, good defense there to poke it free. Hillsland pushed by McGee. Second foul on Pitt. McGee's first. Coming up Monday, big Monday on ESPN. Connecticut could be the new number one in college basketball. Then they got to go to Louisville. <laughs> and then at 9 Eastern, Sharon Collins in Kansas taking on Baylor. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. Well, hasn't that been the timing? Number one, all of a sudden faces another highly ranked team away from home, so to speak, although Wake Forest did lose to Virginia Tech at home. Yeah, you and I were there for that game. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh was number one in the country for two weeks, first time they had had a number one team at Pitt as Heron Goaty scores since the Pitt football team back in 1982 stayed number one for three weeks. Heron Goaty scored with the left that time and Notre Dame really battling and scraping. You know Pittsburgh's a blue collar team. They love to get in the trenches and try to beat you down low. But Notre Dame hanging right with them playing as physical as Pittsburgh is. Nice tip after the miss by Biggs. Gilbert Brown able to stick it in. And they're going to get Brown for a foul, his first third on the Panthers. Now, I'm sure that was a bump, and that was a foul. But considering the physical play on both ends of the floor, to make a call like that outside only tells me the officials are trying to get, or get control of the game again. Because by comparison, that was kind of a foul light. Pittsburgh coming off the loss to Villanova. Notre Dame has dropped four straight. This is their fifth consecutive game against the ranked team. Fourth in a row against the top ten squad. They've got a five-point lead at Peterson Event Center. Aaron Goaty on Blair. Blair wins that one. Yeah, Blair gave no ground. Luke Aaron Goaty normally gets an advantage by backing his guy down, bumping him, and making him retreat. The three for Ashton Gibbs, a freshman. He is six of nine from behind the arc in Big East games. He gets the Panthers within a deuce. And that's the thing that makes Pitt so powerful, their resilience. 0 for 10 in the second half from beyond the arc against Villanova. They have not been afraid to shoot the ball from three in this game. Aaron Goaty against Blair. The double comes in the kick out to Ayers. That's big for him. He had missed his last 12 three-point tries. Yeah, coming into this game, 14 of his last 50. Field goal attempt, that's 28%. And for a guy who was a starter, that's just unacceptable. He's a much better player than that. There's Sam Young with that pat. That's the dunk. Hit. And pulled down by Torrey Jackson. That patented ball fake, probably the best in the land. 
Gets the defender off his feet, but you got to finish. Zeller hit four threes earlier. Got his fit from behind the arc in Notre Dame up eight. And Luke Zeller, without question, has been the difference in this ball game. You know, Pittsburgh able to climb back closer when he's out. But back in the game, they got to find a solution. Six great points by the Irish. Good D by Hillsland. Three on one for Notre Dame. Heron Gody to Ayers. And a blocking foul on Wanamaker. This first, and the fourth on Pittsburgh. Well, Sam Young, once again, nobody does it better. Look how he gets the defender off his feet, and everybody knows it's coming. But missing that dunk really hurt. And again, nobody near Luke Zeller as Wanamaker tries to get there. I'm surprised that he's not had anybody in his face because he's burning it up. This is America. And what matters most is protecting what matters. Bank of America does that with savings products no other bank has, all designed to keep your hard-earned money safe and growing. Bank of America. Bank of Opportunity. Wednesday at 10, 9 central. You saved my life. The world was a different place in 1973. Just another day at the zoo. Especially for a cop. You can't make this stuff up. Someone is cutting off heads in the precinct. Michael Imperioli, Harvey Keitel, Gretchen Maul, and Jason O'Mara. The killer's still out there, and you're withholding vital information. Sometimes you got to keep a secret when the reason's right. ABC's Life on Mars. All new Wednesday at 10, 9 central after a new Lost on ABC. Customer service. Customer service. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Let me Let call, me call up your, your account. account. It says here you recently moved. Network's slow today. I apologize. What you see here is the difference your network makes. Well, where is that report? Here it is. Got it. Is our network down again? The network on the right is Optimum Light Path. So, how about the uh, new field office down schedule? Well, we're having network issues up and running. Optimum serves businesses of every size. Larger companies rely on Optimum Light Path. It's Backyard Masters Pool and Spa Super Football Sunday Weekend Sale. Big game bonus, free filter, pump, auto vac, and entry system with any pool purchase and up to $6,000 off any spa. Guaranteed lowest prices of the season. Guess the winning team and final score in this Super Football Sunday's game and your purchase is free. That's right, free. Get in the game. Sale starts this Thursday, 10 to 6, Friday, 10 to 7, Saturday, 10 to 6, and Sunday, 9 to 3. Only at Backyard Masters Pool and Spa. Two locations in Patchogue and Farmingdale. Darren Oka in studio. Let's update West Virginia and Louisville. 500, 800th game, rather, all time at Freedom Hall. Alex Ruoff, though, for West Virginia. They had a 10 0 run in this game. They trail by two. It's on ESPN360.com. Gentlemen. And Darren Louisville and Marquette, the only two unbeaten teams in Big East games remaining. Louisville has a good one on Big Monday. Presented by Bud Light taking on Connecticut, which could be the new number one team in college basketball. That's followed up by Kansas and Baylor in the Big 12. Connecticut looking to become the second Big East team this season. Pittsburgh the other to be number one. And boy, Louisville, since you and I saw him against South Florida earlier this month, been on a tear. Well, I'll tell you what, early in the season, the losses to Minnesota, uh, Western Kentucky, everybody wanted to write Louisville off. All they had to do was get their guard play together. Samardo Samuel staying in the ball game, and they're as formidable as everybody expected. They blew that lead against Kentucky late in the game, yet Sosa still won it with a three, and Louisville has not looked back since that win against their arch rivals. Zeller looking for another three. That's only a second miss from behind the arc. He's five of seven. 15 points for Luke Zeller with a little less than seven minutes in the game. He's three points away from his career high, which is 18. Second three for Ashton Gibbs. This guy is seven of ten as a freshman in Big East games from behind the arc. Light it up, young fella. Aaron Gody on Blair. Aaron Gody's having trouble scoring on Blair. Just two out of seven from the floor. Well, again, Juan Blair is one of those big bodies that pushes Luke Aaron Gody away from the basket. Another offensive rebound. Got it stripped, though, by McElarney. They're going to get a foul here on Blair. That's his first, fifth on the Panthers. We talk about Luke Carangoni liking to back people down and make them move back and retreat. Blair doesn't retreat. And look at Carangoni fading away with the hook. 
Now, we've seen that happen against Syracuse where um, Rick Jackson and Renze Onowaku blocked the number of his shots, and he wound up shooting 9 for 28. Against UConn, with Hashim Fabit, he shoots under 50%. And here, against a guy that will not move in the block, Luke Harangoti having his problem. He still, obviously, is the best player in the conference, particularly if you look at his numbers. But there are some guys that he has problems with that he can't bully. And if he can't bully him, he has the difficulty. And Blair is one of them. And Blair already with a double-double, the 14th of the season. 10 points, 10 rebounds. Big's another big body. Ayers with his second three of the game after missing 12 straight from behind the arc. Notre Dame by eight. Nine threes in the first half for the Irish. Well, they're playing their game. I mean, I, Mike Gray told us they want to play and do the things that they do best. And right now, Firing on all the cylinders from beyond the arc, and that's without Kyle McElarney really being involved in the ballgame. Yeah, good point. Those three pointers made in a half, 14. They almost got their tenth there. That went in and out. Heron Goody took it away from Gibbs. Well, Gibbs couldn't hold the block out. Heron Goody just perseveres. Ayers, not shy, misses his second straight after two makes in a row. Fields out in transition with a pull up jig. And that's confidence. Pulling up at the elbow, knocking down the shot with nobody underneath the rebound for you. Good steal by Fields. He's got Gibbs with him. And Gibbs with a layup. Nice. Timeout Notre Dame. Talk about Kyle McElarney not being involved in the ball game on that turnover. You, you fault the passer, but McElarney doesn't really come to it. See him backing up, and when he backed up, Fields saw his chance to shoot the gap, and the rest was pure LeVance Fields, drawing the defender, giving it back. Again, shooting the gap. If McElarney doesn't meet the ball, defender comes to Fields. Fields does what he does best. You said earlier, Len, that it's hard to call this a must win at the end of January for Notre Dame, but still four straight losses granted against all ranked teams. And this is their fifth straight against a ranked foe, fourth in a row against a top 10 squad. But they got to go to Cincinnati this week and UCLA. Cincinnati just beat Georgetown, and UCLA is UCLA. Well, I'm thinking conference play, and they're about as close to this being a must game without calling a must game as you possibly can get. As I mentioned before, you know, the consensus belief was 9-9 nine and nine in this conference, and Mike Gray has confirmed that, would put you in the NCAA tournament conversation. If you fall below that, now you're struggling a little bit. Aaron Goody with the offensive rebound, blocked by Young, but they're going to get Biggs inside for the foul. I mean, the fact that Notre Dame, is, as much as people expected them to be in the conversation without any question at the beginning of the season is struggling to stay in the conversation is a surprise unto itself. 16 foul on Pitt first on Biggs. I think the surprising thing about Notre Dame this year, it's not the defense, it's the offense. Coming into this game line, 15th in the conference in shooting. This is normally one of the better shooting teams in the country. Yeah, and, and even Mike Bray had the expectation that his team would shoot better, thus be better. So he's a little disappointed, a little surprised, but, you know, he's not the kind of guy that's going to give up. As you mentioned, he's tinkered with the lineup. He's changed his practice schedule and regimen, trying to do something to shake these guys out of that offensive doldrum. Aaron Goody gets them both. He'll go to the bench now with 6.6 rebounds. Yeah, he needs help. I mean, there are times when he's four shots because he's been the sole offensive threat. But today, Luke Zeller has really stepped up and given him major support. This guy's been terrific for Pitt. Ashton Gibbs with 11 points. He averages four a game. This is the Zeller Gibbs show right now. Three threes for Pitt, all by Gibbs. Notre Dame has nine threes as McElarney stepped on the sideline and turned it over. Jamie Dixon wearing a striped shirt. Pointed it out to the officials and then even helped them signal Pittsburgh ball. Well, he can move a little bit better with those sneakers, too. Got those uh, sneakers on as this is Coaches versus Cancer Suits and Sneakers Awareness Weekend. Both uh, Coach Dixon and Coach Bray of Notre Dame heavily involved in Coaches versus Cancer Awareness. In fact, Dixon had his inaugural gala this past May that raised a couple of hundred thousand dollars for cancer research.
Not a good pass by Sam Young. Blair had Herringoti sealed, but he got to get it up higher. Aaron Goody able to kick it out to Jackson. Hills land on the drive and a blocking foul called here. Seventh hit team foul. And Young picks up his second personal. Been a terrific offensive game so far, especially from behind the arc. Some unlikely heroes. Luke Zeller for Notre Dame and Ashton Gibbs for Pittsburgh. Sunday live in studio coming up in just a few minutes on the UPS halftime report. We take a look at Big East basketball. Louisville trying to stay red hot as they host West Virginia. We'll also look ahead to Monday as Pat Summit goes for an unbelievable 1,000th win as a head coach. But it will not be easy at Oklahoma. Tom Brennan going to join me at the half. Gentlemen. All right, Dari. Meanwhile, Notre Dame leads Pittsburgh by three. And the Irish with nine made threes. I'll tell you what, it's all Luke Zeller, 5 of 7 from beyond the arc. He's the one guy Pittsburgh obviously didn't count on. And speaking of not counting on anyone, Ashton Gibbs off the bench for Pittsburgh, 3 of 4 from beyond the arc. Gibbs has helped Pittsburgh climb back into it after a fast start of, by Notre Dame, led by Luke Zeller. Meanwhile, the guys that normally do the damage, struggling. Luke Heron Goody, 2 of 8, 6 points. Sam Young for Pittsburgh is 0 for 8. And no points. Zach Hills land at the line. Way off of that attempt. Aaron Gody and Blair have been talking John throughout the game. The two top rebounders in the Big East Conference, both in the top five in the country. 0 for 2 for Hillsland on that trip. Yeah, Hillsland just a 52% free throw shooter. And that's something that's going to maybe play a role in the game going forward. And there they get Hillsland for the foul, his second, and Fields shaken up. That'll scare every Pitt fan in the country, considering the games he missed last year with a foot injury really hurt Pittsburgh. Saturday night primetime presented by DirecTV. We move to the SEC with Tennessee taking on Florida. For more info, you can go to ESPN.com. And boy, Tennessee kind of in a similar position as Notre Dame and needing wins. Balls at 12 and 7. Meanwhile, Florida having a terrific season so far. I'll tell you what, Tennessee began the season in the top 10, and four out of five losses at home has really kind of taken the bottom out of the, the season for them. They're in a free fall right now. And Notre Dame started the season in the top 10 as well. Right now, 22nd, but likely to fall out of the top 25. Maybe even if they win today. Nice steal by Dixon. And he's going to fire back into the lane and draw the foul. Boy, this play was athleticism personified. Jermaine Dixon, younger brother of Maryland's Juan Dixon, who won the national championship in 2002. And you take a look right there. Looked a little bit like Larry Fitzgerald in the open field. And a nice hands. And Dixon leads the Big East in league games in steals. You know who Larry Fitzgerald is. Yeah, right? former, <laughs> former Pitt Panther, right? And I talked with the Fitz this week. He's probably watching today, depending on the meeting schedule, as uh, the Arizona Cardinals get ready to play in Super Bowl 43 tomorrow against the Steelers. I guess I have to reveal that you are the voice, the radio voice of the Arizona Cardinals. And no sooner than this game is ended, you're going to be on a fast plane down to Tampa. Either that or you're driving if the weather gets bad. <laughs> as long as you got a ticket for me, <laughs> that could be arranged. We're tied now at 34, three minute mark here in the first half. A 10-2 run by Pittsburgh. Heron Goody's three, not even close. Two of nine now from the floor. I see Luke Heron Goody feeling a lot of pressure to be able to score from anywhere because the other cylinders on the Notre Dame offense aren't working except for Luke Zell, who was really unexpected. And right there, the turnover by Pitt. It's just an unforced turnover. The quick pitch out just went awry. McElarney got free, and he cans the triple. One of the few times Kyle McElarney seen some daylight, and you all know what happens when he gets enough daylight. 
he can knock it down. Leads the Big East in three-point field goal percentage as well as three-point field goals made. Blair got oh, nice. it blocked by Heron Gody. Nice job by Heron Gody just to go after the ball. He got faked out. Jackson dribbles into the paint. Out to Ayers. Aaron Gody on Blair. Zeller. Cans another one. How about this guy? Six threes in the first half for Luke Zeller. And it's tied his career high. And we haven't even finished the first half. And you know, it's it's not ironic. It's probably something that was wishful thinking. Mike Gray told us he needed more out of guys like Luke Zeller and Zach Hillisland. And Zeller obviously delivering. How about Notre Dame answering that run by Pittsburgh scoring six in a row, but now Gibbs working into the lane. He has tied his career high with 13 points, most of them today coming from behind the arc, able to get in the lane on that previous play. McElhone, look at the way LeVance Fields playing McElhone, playing a bit on top and trying to follow him off a of screen, so when he turns after he sees, he's got a player in his face. Aaron Gody able to score inside his third field goal. Look at that steal, almost a steal. You saw Torrey Jackson kind of lurking in the weeds. One minute mark here in the first half. Fields on Heron. No! Wild Man. shot! How did he get that to go? Oh, no. Not that one. Straight out of New York City playgrounds. Fields, the senior out of Brooklyn. And then Heron Gody as it go off the rim on the other end. Soft touch not falling for Luke Harringold. He's getting a lot of stuff right on the rim that normally rolls in. It's 3 of 11 in this game. Now has to guard Dewan Blair. And Blair got the rebound and then got fouled. He just took that thing away from Harringold. Six offensive rebounds for Blair, the leader in that category in the country. Well, LeVance Fields giving one of the Rucker Entertainment League shots. As he kept the ball away from Harringode. Harringode thought he had a block right there. And look at the body usage right there. Fields uses his body to shield the ball in full extension. I think a degree of difficulty of maybe 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. If not 10, certainly close. Man, that was awesome. Meanwhile, Blair at the free throw line. This is an area where he struggles. Case in point right there. 61% on the season. Wanamaker will replace Fields here with 29.7 on the clock. Fields with seven points leads the Big East in assist to turnover ratio. Talked about the fact that Blair leads the nation in offensive rebound. One out of two at the line there. Hills land back in for the final 30 seconds. And Blair to the bench for Pittsburgh. Talk about how well played this game is. With all the up and down, up and down, total of 10 turnovers between the two teams. Four for Notre Dame and six for Pittsburgh. So we're playing at a very high level right now. Here's Jackson, six seconds to go. Oh, great backdoor cut. Hillsland scores and a foul. <laughs> That was beautifully done they by get Jackson and Hillsland. Dixon picked up the foul. Goes back to the point of a high level of play here. Perfect execution right here. Just going back to just leaving Hillsland by himself as McElarney comes off the screen. Everybody aware of him. And Hillsland slips that little screen. And a nice delivery by Jackson. Notre Dame playing sharp today. You know, obviously getting that humongous lift from Luke Zeller. The fact that Heron Goat, he's 3 of 11 from the field, and barring a miracle, Notre Dame's going to have the lead going into the locker room. That's saying something, and the Irish will, hopefully for their sake, uh, get some confidence from that. Zeller, just incredible this half with six threes and eight attempts. Here's Fields with two seconds remaining. Fields will get the shot off, and that'll do it for the first half. 11 threes. The school record is 19. And that was earlier this season. Zeller had six of them, and Notre Dame leads it 45 39. 
terrific first half for Luke Zeller. Now we go to Darinoko and Tom Brennan for the UPS halftime report. All right, Dave, Lynn, thanks so much. We'll kick it back to Pittsburgh here in uh, just a little bit. Meanwhile, on the UPS Halftime Report, the coach, Tom Brennan, joins me. Uh, Dari Noka here. We're going to talk about college hoops that are, is underway here at noon. We've got some good games already underway, but let's talk about this one first. Notre Dame, they've lost four in a row. They go to a place where Pitts won 14 in a row, and they're up by six. I guess 11 from 22 from downtown will get it done, right? <laughs> you know what, my brother? This game should have trees and guys with uh, drinking out of brown bags next to it because this has all the earmarks of a summer league tussle. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. 22 threes already. So let's project now. Notre Dame will win if they go 22 of 44 from three. That's a safe bet, right? 66 <laughs> points from downtown, that'll do it. Yes, sir. Uh, it, well, how, I mean, how do you stay hot like this? You're you on the road, first of all. Unfamiliar rims, unfamiliar no, court. You don't. That's the thing. This That's is, where it's going to slow down. This is fool's gold. And I, I'm telling you, I really, I really like Notre Dame. I love the way Bray runs his program. I love the way they play. It's the way my teams used to play. How about this stat? I've had nine, nine different guys attempt 16 threes in a game for me at Vermont. No kidding. So we weren't afraid of the three. But you live by it, you die by it, and Pitt's so strong inside. Uh, it's going to be an excellent second half, though. This would be a heck of a way to break a four-game losing streak. Meanwhile, lots more ahead on the UPS halftime report, like... Patty Mills, maybe the best point guard in the country, certainly one of them. He's going to be out about a month with a broken hand. How does that kill St. Mary's? Also, Louisville and West Virginia. We'll update that. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Infinity. Luxury cars that inspire at every turn. Seems calm outside Peterson Event Center as we welcome you back to ESPN's coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. And inside, the Panther fans hoping for about one hour of energy. And we were quiet in that first half because Notre Dame kept hitting threes, but can they keep it up, Len? They had eight more threes made than Pitt, but their lead's only six. Well, you expect Pittsburgh to make the adjustment. You know, they let it get started by trying to take Luke Harangodi out of the game with a double team, leaving Luke Zeller wide open, and Zeller delivered six of eight from beyond the arc. And Notre Dame playing long ball. 22 of their 35 field goal attempts have been from beyond the arc. But thank goodness if you're a Pittsburgh fan for Ashton Gibbs, who came in, helped Pittsburgh climb back. Five of six on the field, three of four from beyond the arc, 13 points. He leads Pittsburgh in scoring. And Dewan Blair already has a double-double. Did we expect anything less? Well, he averages that on the year. He's got 14 now in the season. Much more attention played to Luke Bella right here, and he turns it over as Tyrell Biggs gets up in his face now. And Biggs, a, a guy that can actually get a hand in his face at six feet eight. Zeller is 6'11", and had a lot of open looks in that first half. If you're Pittsburgh, you got to take a bit of solace in the fact that you're only six down, and your leading scorer, Sam Young, 0 for 8 from the field, no points in the first half. That was big right there. LeVance Fields, a 36% three-point shooter, now with 10 points in the game, gets Pitt back within three. And most points they've given up in the first half, but here they are in transition in the second half. First basket of the game for Sam Young. He'll look to tie it at the line. Well, Pittsburgh known for their defense. Another adjustment coming off the screen, shooting the gap. Once again, it's Jonathan Peoples this time. Notre Dame does not meet the ball on that pass, allowing Pittsburgh to shoot the gap and get the layup down on the other end. You got to come and you got to meet the ball, knowing that the defense is willing to gamble. If Peoples comes to the ball, that's a foul on Sam Young for running in to the receiver. Instead, Young ties the game, the reigning Big East player of the week, who was 0 for 8 from the field in the first half. Six straight points by the Panthers in less than a minute to tie the game. And Jackson turned it over. Mental errors by the Irish here to start the second half. And Mike Bray understanding his team can't stand prosperity. You mentioned two consecutive possessions, two turnovers that were pretty much unnecessary. 
Well, he said they needed an hour of energy. They've had a minute of energy so far, and it's been enough to tie the game at 45 for Pittsburgh. Connecticut, Louisville, Kansas, Baylor, Monday on ESPN. How can a dinner this informal be this romantic? And how can a beer this full flavored be just 99 calories? Budweiser Select, the exception to the rule. It is called the International. It is the world's most powerful bank that controls everything. It uses your money for murder. Now, Agent Lewis Salinger will risk everything to find the truth. There has to be a way to bring down this bank. I have tracked four deaths, two disappearances, and three murders. How could they possibly have found out? Drop the gun! They'll never let you live. The International. Rated R. In theaters February 13th. Some people go through life following plan A. It's predictable, expected, but my plan is to do more, to work on my terms, to open up new perspectives, to find a competitive advantage. Welcome to Plan B from Brother. Our inkjet all-in-ones make your biggest ideas look even bigger. It's the smarter way to work in color. My plan is to write my success story every single day. Make the smarter choice. Plan B from Brother. Your pizza delivery guy. Well, come on in, man. What you waiting on? Mouth-watering toppings, fresh-baked pizzeria taste. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Score delivery pizza. Ouch! Minus the delivery price. For fresh delivery taste without the delivery price, it's DiGiorno. Karen was finally headed home. Make that the video store. If she had Netflix, she could keep her DVDs for as long as she wants. Take the drama out of renting. Netflix, unlimited movies for $8.99 a month. Well, after only four first half turnovers, Notre Dame has given it away three times here in one minute, and Pittsburgh has tied the game at 45. This is a huge game for the Irish. Pittsburgh comes into this game two and two in its last four. And as you see, Marquette and Louisville at the top of the standings, both at 7 0. Connecticut, Louisville on Big Monday, by the way. And then Notre Dame losing four straight, playing its fifth consecutive game against a ranked team, trying to avoid a 12 and 8 start. Well, if you know the game, you obviously do not want to be on the second page of our Big East standings, because that means you've got a lot of work to do. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, most people believe nine and nine in this conference gives you a strong argument for the NCAA tournament. And Notre Dame cannot afford to lose here because it is an uphill battle from there. You saw Georgetown in the second page of the standings. The Hoyas have also lost four straight. They got a big one today against Marquette. Blair with a miss on one end. Here's Heron Goatee, who's 3 of 11 in the first half. Leading scorer in the Big East Conference, also leading rebounder. Heron Goatee with 8.7 boards. Jackson got caught in the air and picked up a foul. They're going to get Sam Young for his third personal. Yeah, that reach in. Not a smart play by Sam Young. Corey Jackson going laterally, not really making any progress to the basket. Aaron Goatee now 3 of 12 after that quick shot and miss. Yeah, and, you know, Luke Aaron Goatee obviously a much better player, much smarter player than that, but he just seems to feel like he's got to score for this team when he gets his hands on the ball. And the way his team is playing right now, he just needs to continue to move it, get it to the open man as they did it for much of the first half. Here's Young starting to heat up as he gives Pitt the lead. points in just over two minutes after not scoring in the first half. With a tough pass by Hillsland, really, Aaron Goatee with nothing to do with it, but he does move it, which is a smart thing to do. Hillsland finds Aaron Goatee, can't score, it's 3 of 13 now, Blair, oh, what a great save. And look at the quickness by Dixon again, we talked about his athleticism. And Young now has to save it, if they score here, it'll be unbelievable. Don't believe it. That was a fitting ending to that possession, huh? Dixon swats it away from McElarney. Herringote cleans it up. 
Fortuitous bounce for Notre Dame as they continue to try to stay in this thing. Another tip in by DeLon Blair. He's not the best offensive rebounder in the country by accident. 16 boards for him. Land draws a foul, second on Pittsburgh here in the half. We take a look at Deron Blair, loses it, but man, just barely saves it by inches. And Dixon with another save on the end, misses the shot, but Blair from one end to the other. That's just hustle right there. And then staying underneath an excellent position on the offensive glass, able to put it back. And you're right. He's not there by accident at the top of the offensive rebounding list. He's there because he works at it. That's his eighth offensive rebound of the game. Looked a lot like one of his favorite players in uh, his favorite team's uniform, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Troy Palomalu just all over the place there on both ends. And meanwhile, Hills landed the line, hit his first free throw. He's got to grow his hair a little bit. <laughs> Might take about nine years. That's the last time Palomalu had a cut back in 2000. 51-49, Pittsburgh by two. Fields off the Blair screen. Out to Dixon for three. Only a 23% three-point shooter is Dixon. Hillsland falls. McElarney with a floater in and out. Another board for Blair, number 17. And a five on four as Hillsland is down on the other end. Gilbert Brown. Heron Goatee clears. Oh, they couldn't score there, five on four. Now a stoppage here as they'll have the Notre Dame trainers attend to Hillsland. That's a video timeout. Well, this game has been fast and furious. Probably at Notre Dame's pace on the offensive end, but Pittsburgh very well up to the task. As you see the tip in by Dewan Blair. The Panthers have battled back, take the lead. Thing on this everyday value menu is only a dollar. I hear you, Great man. Great deals, man. Junior Deluxe Burger, a dollar. Chicken strip sandwich, a dollar. Small tot for. Whoa. Wow, this usually doesn't happen. What was that? The new everyday value menu at Sonic. Got a buck? Then drive in for a variety of great food, like a Junior Deluxe Burger, a chicken strip sandwich, or grab a delicious Junior Breakfast Burrito for just a dollar. Sonic's new everyday value menu. All this for a buck each. Uh, we were kind of in the middle of something. Yeah, what happened there? Welcome to Progressive's Concierge Claim Center. You must be Mr. Garcia. I was in a little fender bender. We have your reservation right here. <laughs> Assess the damage, coordinate the repairs, and call you when it's fixed. And it all comes with your policy. Here's your rental. Can I see it again? Taking care of everything for you. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Everybody's talking about the economic tsunami. What does that mean to a surfing CEO? Um, tsunami in uh, surfing is sort of a thrilling prospect, but the tsunami in business is uh, kind of terrifying, and you have to watch the uh, management of your assets very carefully. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do things at the speed of light these days to stay um, ahead of the wolf pack. Right. And without technology, we would be nowhere. It helps you to uh, still rip it up. In a changing world, who do you want by your side? A financial advisor who knows you? An advisor who understands you? An advisor who's weathered the changing world right beside you? The world may change. Our commitment to you doesn't. That's the financial relationship we call you and us. UBS. Dory Noka, we are keeping our eyes on games across the country, and we take you to Cincinnati. Xavier, winners of nine in a row, taking on UMass. Struggling team from Amherst. Xavier up nine. They're shooting 71% right now, guys. It's on ESPNU. 
Well, in the first half here, Notre Dame was 50 percent, hit 11 of 22 from three, but they haven't even attempted a three and are trailing now by five here in the second half as we welcome you back to ESPN's coverage of college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. And our Saturday primetime game tonight presented by DirecTV, Pitts, Florida against Tennessee. Game day coming from Knoxville Live. They talked with Pat Summit earlier today as well. Pat going for win number 1,000. Tennessee meets Oklahoma Monday night. Dave, you mentioned Notre Dame's lack of three-point attempts in this half. You can attribute that to Pittsburgh's newfound attentiveness around the perimeter. They were giving up those shots in the first half primarily to Luke Zeller. Zeller made him pay, and the adjustment is obvious. Go, go. Great hands with Dewan Blair getting that steal, and Fields with a three on the other end. It's an eight-point Pittsburgh lead. Well, making the extra pass, that's been a hallmark of the Pittsburgh tradition under Jamie Dixon. And right there, LeVance Fields, a beneficiary, a team that really plays together. Dixon is everywhere. Almost tipped that ball away from Aaron Goody. Aaron Goody on Blair. Blair has won the battle today, but Aaron Goody got him that time, his fourth field goal. I don't think you make a steady diet of fadeaways if you loop Aaron Goody, but he does have the ability to make them. It's just that when they're not being made, he's got to utilize some discretion. He is so important to the Notre Dame offense. Check that fifth field goal by Heron Goody. Blair with a miss. There's Dixon. Right on Kimlet. Goody's everywhere. He's been a tremendous lift off the bench for Pittsburgh. Doesn't really show up in the stat sheets except for that point right there. Point. Jackson trying to force that one to McElarney. On the low block. Dixon has hit a big three. And then the tip in right here. Well, actually, this is the, the three down in and out with Vance stepping up. But going back to Jermaine Dixon again, hit a big three early in this half. Another tip in. Everybody's starting to make shots now, including the Vance Fields. A laid back to eight for Pittsburgh. Notre Dame with five turnovers in this half already. And Mike Gray wants to talk it over. Ten point Pittsburgh lead. Fired up many a uh, time when they watch Larry Fitzgerald catch passes here in Pittsburgh. One of the greatest Pitt Panthers of all time. You think of all the great players they've had here at this school. Fitzgerald now with the uh, Arizona Cardinals, of course, setting the NFL playoff record for receiving yards. And uh, we'll see what he does tomorrow night against the Steelers. And you know, Len, uh, I'm sure just about everybody here is rooting for the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I, I got this for you here. Oh, let me duck, man. I'm going to get hit. People see that. Holy cow. I'm a little biased, though, considering, you know, I do the radio for them. But you're also courageous, my yeah, brother. Yeah. Notice how I kept it low and didn't put it on my head, though. Yeah, but everybody out front probably saw that one. I'm just <laughs> making sure I duck. Hey, you're my ride to the airport. <laughs> you're in now, pal. There with a the rebound as Heron Goody continues to struggle. And Gilbert Brown foot on the line, missed the two, but a foul here on Zeller, his second, and the second on Notre Dame. And Zeller had to battle Dewan Blair underneath. Blair again with excellent position on the offensive glass. And it's just an amazing tribute to the way he works. Right there, you see. Obviously the aftermath and Blair slaps the ball out of Zeller's hands. A uh, couple of messages being sent. He looks at Zeller right here and says, baby, you can't stop me underneath. He's got 19 rebounds, Blair, and 15 points. And a double-double at half. Oh. Blair goes. again, almost had it. And McElarney out of there with it now for Notre Dame. Irish still have not attempted a three in this half after making 11 in the first half. Jackson got caught underneath, another turnover, and he fouled Fields. That's two on Jackson, three on Notre Dame. Well, that was an excellent example of why they haven't shot threes. You saw how Robinson closed out on Jackson, not allowing him to even get a look. And that's what Pittsburgh's done in this second half. They've done an excellent job of closing on the three-point shooters, 
They went away from the double team against Harren Doty and started facing up guys. And Luke Zeller not having any effect from beyond the arc. Blair fouled. He was double teamed by Hillsland and Nash. Take a look. Once the pass goes from Harren Doty, look at the closeout right there. Jackson not able to even get a look from beyond the arc. And forcing him to dribble into trouble. So Nash picks up his third. Blair a rebound away from a career best 20. He has tied Jeff Adrian for the most in a Big East Conference game this year. For the most by a Big East player in any game. Matt Koshwell of DePaul at 22 against Creighton. Fields out of the game. How important is he to this Pittsburgh team, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, he was outstanding among the nation's leaders in assist turnover ratio. He runs the show, one of the best floor leaders in the game. You can take very hard to take the ball away from him. He's got full court vision and always willing to make that pass. And of course, he can knock down some shots to keep the defenses on. Eight points in the half for Levance Fields. 15 for the game as Heron Goody got free and scores. And 14 points, 10 rebounds now for Luke Heron Goody. The conference of both those categories. And there's an example of maybe Dwan Blair being too active, stepping out on the hedge. Nobody covers for him down low as he's got to run all the way from the top of the key down low to cover Heron Goody. So timeout here by Pittsburgh, three remaining for the Panthers. Huge game Monday night on Big Monday presented by Bud Light, perhaps the new number one. Connecticut, we talked about Jeff Adrian. He'll be on display against Samardo Samuels, big man for Louisville at 7 Eastern time, followed by Kansas and Baylor. On Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. Well, you know, you talk about a lot of guys who get accolades in the Big East, but the guy who's very deserving, Jeff Adrian, 43 double doubles. We know Luke Karen Gody, Dewan Blair, they get a lot of the spotlight. But Adrian, as I said, just quietly, consistently is a workhorse for UConn over the years that he's played. Doesn't get a lot of credit for it, but nevertheless, you can count on him night in, night out. Jim Calhoun just sings his praises. Meanwhile, Karen Gody now with his 10th straight double double. He has had 12 straight games of 20 or more points. Has 14 in this one. By the way, the Notre Dame record, Austin Carr, had 58 straight games of 20 or more points. Well, AC is a Hall of Famer without a doubt. I mean, it's just unbelievable when you think about that. No three-point shot, no 35-second clock, and he still put points on the board with a high level of consistency. And that's an understatement, I guess. Carr, the all-time leading scorer at Notre Dame, as a Gibbs three-point attempt from deep hit the iron and out of bounds to Notre Dame. See if the Irish can make a run again without even attempting a three here in the second half. Aaron Goody's the only Notre Dame player to actually get a basket here since halftime. For Notre Dame. Hillsland lost it and it will go to Pittsburgh. Mike Bray and the Irish trying to avoid a fifth straight defeat. It would get Notre Dame to three and six. And he told us, you know, nine and nine in the Big East, good chance of getting it, which means they got to go six and three the right. rest of the way. And their schedule still has a bunch of the ranked teams remaining. And some of the teams that aren't ranked, teams like Cincinnati and others who have beaten some pretty good teams. Biggs can't get the bounce. Offensive rebound and put back by Gilbert Brown. That's a nice job by Brown to hang around, but Notre Dame cannot afford to give up on the blockouts, knowing how good an offensive rebounding team Pittsburgh is. Hillsland puts it home. We mentioned Notre Dame's schedule. They still have to go to Connecticut and Providence, which suddenly looks like a Big East juggernaut. They do have South Florida, Rutgers, and St. John's at home, but they lost to St. John's earlier this year. Yeah, no, I, I don't envy the Irish, regardless of who's on the schedule at this point. Losing this one, that road is steep. Coming back to that 9-9 nine and nine respectability in conference play. Lucky bounce there ends up in the hands of Dixon. Shot clock down to five. Here's Dixon for three. Oh, oh. big shot with two on the top. Hey, Jermaine Dick Dixon has demonstrated again that He's a valuable commodity off the bench. And he's giving them a lift on both ends of the floor. Aaron Goaty 
underrated athlete. Able to put it home. Well, he's gotten a little bit of freedom right now. Dewan Blair on the bench getting the blow. And Terrell Biggs is no slouch defensively. But he's not the same as Dewan Blair. He doesn't present the same obstacle. Look at the mismatch. You got Sam Young with McElarney on his back. And they finally get it to him, but it's too late. Touch last by Heron Goody. It'll stay Pittsburgh ball. And boy, Jermaine Dixon has been terrific here in the second half on defense and on offense with a three that puts Pitt up by nine. We've discovered that certain school chants, when played backwards, may reveal their team's offensive schemes. Listen. Sounds normal enough. Now, in reverse. You guys are morons. ESPN College Game Day, driven by State Farm. Saturdays at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. His company doesn't offer medical insurance, so we needed an affordable health plan that fit our family's needs. When I started my own business, I didn't think I could afford health insurance. I just wanted to be able to see my personal doctor once a year. When I retired, we were years away from Medicare. But we still needed protection. What if something serious happened? So a friend recommended Assurance Health. We were able to protect our entire family. They even have a dental plan. I saved hundreds of dollars by only paying for benefits I want. I even got a 15% discount just for being healthy. We got six million in medical coverage and can even see the specialist we choose without a referral. For over 100 years, Assurant Health has been meeting the needs of individuals like you. Plans start under $100 per month. These offers may not last, so call 1-800-229-0191 to lock in your rate for two years. Patient teacher. The title goes to Knoxville again. Inspiring motivator. Tonight is number eight. And the most prolific winner of all time. Pat Summit is the all-time winningest coach. Pat Summit goes for win number 1,000 versus Oklahoma on Monday, February 2nd on ESPN2. Some of our headlines from around college basketball, including Pat Summit going for 1,000 on ESPN2 Monday. Michigan State having a great year on the road. Wake with its win over Duke and Gonzaga team that you feel Len will be in the Final Four. Yeah, they've won their seventh straight. They've kind of stumbled a little bit early in the season, actually middle of the season. In November, they were playing well. They won the uh, Old Spice Classic down in November, down in uh, Orlando, where I saw them. And they've got what you need. They've got the balance. They can play from the perimeter. They've got some inside play. Good defensive team. And they've got size. And I think they're going to be one of those teams that's looking to survive and get to Detroit. What about this Pittsburgh team? I think this Pittsburgh team has just about everything as well, but they've got to consistently demonstrate that they can score. Today, they're shooting the three very well. 7 of 14 from beyond the arc. That's not always the case for them. And they've got to be able to get Sam Young going and keep him as consistent as he's been thus far. Young misses that time. Wanamaker with the offensive rebound and put back. That's 15 offensive rebounds for the Panthers. And that's the bailout for Pittsburgh. They work so hard on the offensive glass. And quite honestly, that's what makes the shooters more confident to take the perimeter shot, knowing that your guys can go get it and put it back. You look at uh, the field goals from behind the arc in the second half, and that's why the Panthers are outscoring Notre Dame 29-12 since intermission. Yeah, the fact that Pittsburgh's been able to close out and really play Notre Dame from beyond the arc. They gave them a chance in the first half, and Notre Dame burned them. You know, burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice. Jamie Dixon realizes it's not going to be shame on them. Blair daring Heron Goody to 
shoot that three has made six on the year. Jackson's had a quiet game offensively. And can't get the bounce there. Kept alive by Heron Goaty. And last touch by Young. Notre Dame ball. But Torrey Jackson has not scored in this game, and he's averaging 11 points per contest and has been a very valuable performer for Notre Dame over the last couple of years. Yeah, he's averaged about 10 points over the last five games, but he's only shooting 38% in conference play. So people have made it tough on him. Give Gibbs credit, done a good job guarding him. Long fields to cover McElarney as Aaron Goody scores. 18 now for him. How did he get that one off? Perfect defense by Blair, staying on his feet, extending. Assistant coach Tommy Heron from um, Pittsburgh coming out and telling Blair, nice job. That was just an excellent play by Luke Heron Goody. Timeout taken by Notre Dame, leaving Mike Gray with just one inside of nine minutes. I'll tell you what, you talk about consistency. This is the guy had a double double in the first half. Nine offensive rebounds thus far in this game. Really attacked the glass. And 17 second chance points for Pittsburgh, primarily as a result of the strong play of Juan Blair under the basket. Juan Blair with 19 rebounds, 15 points. It's his 14 double double. In the two losses for Pittsburgh, he's been in foul trouble. Gets Villanova this week, played only 23 minutes, had seven points and eight rebounds. And the loss to Louisville played only 20 minutes because of foul trouble. And he's a huge loss. Anytime he steps off the floor for Pittsburgh because they become a less than great team. But when guys like Terrell Biggs also get in foul trouble, then they're really hurt. And I think the combination really hurts. Look at that. Great move in the left hand. Look, look where he caught it though, Len, too. Yeah, he caught it with his left hand going to the middle of the basket and just turned the body very quickly with that extension. Pittsburgh with the ball leading by 11. And again, Notre Dame still has not attempted a three in the second half. They're 11 of 22. And don't think that if they could. That last attempt by Zeller was a three-point attempt. Their first of the second half as Blair continues to throw his body all over the place. And Notre Dame just not getting the same open looks that they got in the first half. And primarily because Pittsburgh went away from the double teams. Using Zeller's man to double Heron Goaty and just decided, okay, you know, let Luke work one on one with our guys, and he'll probably get his. He is the reigning Big East player of the year. But if we shut everybody else down, we have a chance. And that proved to be the case. Now, Blair a little shaken up. Parents are here, and Dewan grew up 600 yards from the campus. Shenley High School, first City League player in some 15 years to play at Pitt since Darrell Porter. Wanamaker left free. Got it. shooting three-point team on the season at around 35 percent. Ayers hits a two. But Pitt is five of seven from three in this half when Notre Dame dominated from behind the arc in the first half going 11 of 22. Well combined with their defense combined with their strong play on the blocks and on the boards if they can shoot like this on a consistent basis yeah they are a final four team but that's the question. Fields. Got fouled. He'll go to the line. That's on Torrey Jackson, his third. Pittsburgh try to bounce back after a loss this week and hand Notre Dame its fifth straight defeat. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. And in part by Triple Rewards of Your Choice at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now. No crash later. With Capital One Card Lab's new triple rewards, me and the boys are having a tough time deciding which category to choose. We're like triple rewards on restaurants and entertainment. Or home improvement. 
Maybe department stores. You're definitely in autumn. Or triple rewards on travel. <laughs> or gas and groceries. <laughs> Introducing triple rewards of your choice. Log on to CardLab at CapitalOne.com to personalize your card. What's in your wallet? The principles of three economics. Supply. Can I make double stack? Demand. Uh. Wendy's Three Economics, featuring the double stack, one of three way better sandwiches for 99 cents each. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Did you know one in three men will face prostate issues? One in three? Really? That's why One A Day Men's is a complete multivitamin with selenium, which emerging research suggests can help prostate health. One A Day Men's. Dari Noka in studio. We are watching a couple of top ten teams on the road. Well, not on the road, but on the ropes. How about Xavier at home against UMass? Chris Lowe for the minute minute. Team one and seven on the road this season, but they lead in Cincinnati by one. That's on ESPNU. Georgia Tech winless in ACC play, leading a team that just beat number one 57-55. We are tracking them both, gentlemen. Well, we saw Wake lose to Virginia Tech, so they have not handled prosperity well. We'll see how Dave Wanstead handles prosperity after a terrific season with the Pitt football team. He's here with some recruits signing day this week for college football teams. Former NFL head coach and coached in a Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator with the Dallas Cowboys. I think that recruit sitting next to him looking to emulate Larry Fitzgerald and looks first. <laughs> For Super Bowl 43 tomorrow, a lot of Steeler fans here in this building. This is the undercard, if you will, for the fans here in the Steel City. Appetizer. Seven turnovers by Notre Dame in the half. Only four in the first half as Fields hits the first free throw. Pittsburgh is not a good free throw shooting team. Near the bottom of the Big East. Aaron Heron go have a lap, but the first and perhaps the last has gone to Blair. He's dominated the matchup so far. But you see how infectious his smile is. He's got Luke Harangoti. His team's having some problems, but Harangoti's still staying in the moment, enjoying that laugh. And it's good to see you guys can compete hard, but still enjoy each other. And Harangoti able to get that one and put it home. 20 points now for him. So that's 13 straight games with 20 plus for Luke Harangoti. three-point baskets for Notre Dame in the half and probably going to need some to get back within striking distance of Pittsburgh. You see LeVance Field kind of walked it up a little bit, waited for guys to get in position. Look at Blair go after it. And they say it's a block by Heron Goody. That has been fun to watch down the low block. Especially for a guy like yourself who yeah. played that position for and, so many years. And they're letting him play, and that's the most important thing. These two guys deserve to be able to give their best and play their game against each other. That's good hands by Luke Aaron Gody. I bet DeJuan Blair would be the first to admit it. Aaron Gody with the left hand. He's starting to get going now. 22 for him. Well, again, if you let it go down low, and Juan Blair's doing the best he can, but he doesn't want to get in foul trouble. Remember, you made the point. He gets in foul trouble. Pittsburgh winds up tagging a loss. And at this late stage of the game, that kind of discretion is very, very useful. To get airs for the foul, his second and the sixth on Notre Dame. Well, we talk about letting guys play. Look at the hands of Dewan Blair. But that was a good block by Heron Gold. He got all ball. Blair's not crying about it. And on the other end, Blair playing solid defense. Just Heron Gold just makes a good play with the left hand. But it's been Heron Gold or bust for Notre Dame in the second half. He's got 14 of the 20 Irish points since intermission. That's been one of their problems in their losses. No one else has been able to score. Aaron Gody with 22 and 11 rebounds. Blair going to the bench now. 19 rebounds to go along with 17 points. Now, if you're going head to head, obviously that's almost a statistic dead heat. But if you're going by team play, I'm sure Dewan Blair would take that every time. Luke Aaron Gody may get his points as long as Pittsburgh gets the win. And Luke would probably wish it was the other way. Yep. Meanwhile, Wake Forest is back up three on Georgia Tech midway through that game in the second half. Hillsland able to get inside and score. Back to a 10-point game under six minutes to play in the second half. That same play Notre Dame used to perfection at the end of the first half. Getting Hillsland on the baseline going back door as the Pittsburgh defense overlooks them. 
But Notre Dame's really got to get Kyle McElarney going. He's only two of seven from the field, two of five from beyond the arc. Fields three, not there. McElarney, who's been quiet, only six points, got the rebound. Here's Heron Goaty. Short, nobody under the basket for Notre Dame. Well, those quick shots are indicative of the desperation Notre Dame's starting to feel right now. An offensive foul there. And, oh, they're going to get Jackson. Wow, they called Jackson for the foul. Looked like Young was over the back. And that's four on Torrey Jackson, seven on Notre Dame, only two team fouls on Pittsburgh. And the official said that Jackson was backing, backing uh, underneath Young. Good block out. You can't back the guy out, though, especially if Young is in the air. Young, 70% free throw shooter, but missed the front end of the one and one. Jackson up high for the rebound. Jackson going to stay in the game with no points and four fouls. They need him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's their best floor leader, even though McElarney handles the point. Now they get Young for his fourth personal foul. Third on the Panthers here in the half. Notre Dame trying to end a four-game losing streak. Pittsburgh looking to bounce back after a loss to Villanova. 16-0 start for the Panthers. They've gone two and two since. Young will go to the bench with four fouls to Juan Blair back into the game. And Pittsburgh has not lost in its last 14 games here and has beat Notre Dame at the peak in the last four meetings. Hillsland dribbled into the double team and blew the layup. Ripped down by Biggs. The impressive thing about Hillsland is his ability to handle the ball for a guy his size. At 6'9", he puts it on the floor nicely, but he gets himself into trouble too far under the basket. And Pittsburgh, that's LeVance Fields, floor general. Hold up, hold up. And back down to the big guy. 19 and 19 for Dewan Blair. And LeVance Fields, and telling his team, to hold up and have some patience, knew exactly what he wanted to do. He saw that Harren Gody was on Blair's back and had to get it to him. Notre Dame has only attempted one three in the second half. Why have they gone away from that land? They, they shot 11 of 22 in the first half. But I think a lot of it has to do with Pittsburgh's defense. And Harren Gody, once again, moves to the middle and gets off his patented jump hook. But Pittsburgh's done an excellent job of being able to close out quickly, to play in the passing lane, and really making it difficult. When Harren Gody gets the ball, they're not leaving the double. They're staying with their men. So you're not getting the inside out three as well. well you knew Jamie Dixon would make adjustments at halftime. Fields off the screen. And Blair kept it alive again. Throwing his body on the floor, whatever it takes for his team. And the crowd definitely appreciates and they appreciate Pittsburgh trying to milk some clock right now with this lead. Appropriate that he's from this town and decided to stay here to play his college ball as Dixon buries a three and might just have buried Notre Dame. Well, if you're talking about Barry and Notre Dame, here are two guys with their hands on the shovel. And Dewan Blair with a nice little pump fake, Harry Gody in the air, classic big man move. Once again, just uses the pump fake, shows the ball, Harry Gody off his feet, and then head and shoulders past him. And Jermaine Dixon doesn't shoot it often, but when he does, he's making some noise. Dixon is three of three from three-point land. He shoots 23% coming in as Pittsburgh is plus 19 on the scoreboard here in the second half. And 27 second chance points. I should have said Dixon doesn't make them often from beyond the arc. He doesn't take game. them either often, but uh, he's taking them at good times in this game. Notre Dame out of timeouts and staring a fifth consecutive defeat in the face unless it can get going here. And against this Pittsburgh defense that's closing on three, they're going to have to make shots with hands in their faces. Aaron Goaty muscling in on Blair and then short with a shot. Nash and Biggs 
battling for it, and they're going to call a foul on Biggs. Pittsburgh leads Notre Dame by 13 inside of three minutes to go at the peak. Hey, it's my wife, Frances. It's Bobby Jr. That's my best friend, Gary. Hey. He's like a brother to me. That's my brother, Richie. He's more like a cousin. Uncle Ray. He's not my real uncle, but he's a keeper. So can I call him? As much as you want. Hey! Altel is now part of Verizon Wireless, creating America's largest mobile-to-mobile -mobile calling family, over 80 million strong. And right now, get great messaging phones on sale, like the NV2 for $49.99 at Verizon Wireless. Your pizza delivery guy. Well, come on in, man. What you waiting on? Mouth-watering toppings, fresh-baked pizzeria taste. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Score delivery pizza. Ouch! Minus the delivery price. For fresh delivery taste without the delivery price, it's DiGiorno. All right, express options. Well, when you ship with UPS, you're in control of the speed and the cost of your shipping. Need it in Miami in two days? Easy. How about next day by 8 a.m.? Guaranteed. You can even have it arrive the same day. It's whatever speed you need. It's not just express options. It's express options with UPS. I think I need a cup. The first stop for the nation's top recruits is signing day on ESPNU. Everyone wins here. Tommy Tuberville joins our experts to break down the players and their decisions. Where does he fit? Where does he feel comfortable? With nine hours of coverage, you'll be sure to hear your school's name. The University of Florida. Colorado. And what it'll take to be on top. Great teams are built from the inside out. It all starts at 10 a.m. Wednesday on ESPNU. Catch expanded coverage on ESPN2, ESPN360.com, and ESPNU.com. Dari Noka in studio. We continue to watch number four Wake at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets winless in ACC play. Now, you know, Wake Forest has Al Farouk Aminu, but his brother is Alade Aminu. His older brother plays for Tech, and there he is. It's a one-point Wake Forest lead. We are watching it closely. Don't forget, coming up at the end of this Notre Dame game against Pittsburgh, we get a little Big 12 hoops. Oklahoma State taking on Josh Carter and Texas a and That's next, guys. Still some work to do here in the Big East with Notre Dame trailing Pittsburgh by 13. Dewan Blair with 19 points, 19 rebounds. Pitt has not turned it over the entire second half. And they've outscored the Irish by 19 as Mike Bray's team trying to avoid a fifth consecutive loss. And the schedule does not get easier for Notre Dame after this one. This is the first of three straight games on the road. Granted, one of those is on a conference, but it's at UCLA. Not, not get any easier. Can it get any harder? They've played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ranked teams consecutively. And four straight against top ten teams. As uh, Wanamaker has it and ahead to Dixon. And the lead is 15 for Pittsburgh. That's only the first three made by Notre Dame in the half, and McAlarney will have a chance at a four-point play. Well, you got to shake your head. Jamie Dixon kind of looks up at the sky. You know, LeVance Fields takes a chance, but look how far out McAlarney is, and Fields fouls him. You know, this is one of those situations where you got to do is put a hand in the guy's face. You got this 15-point lead up till now. And up until that shot, and there's no need to foul a jump shooter. There's really never a need to foul a jump shooter, but certainly not in this situation. McElarney now 27 of 30 at the free throw line, better than 90% of the season. Notre Dame back within 11 of Pittsburgh as we near the two-minute mark. Notre Dame now looking to pressure. They've got to be able to knock the ball loose, get some turnovers. They want to do it, obviously, in live ball, open floor situations. They can get out and run, maybe hit some threes in transition. But that's wishful thinking against this Pittsburgh team, and it's just done everything. A terrific job of protecting the ball. Yep, no giveaways in the half. Wanamaker might have traveled there. It ends up in the hands of Blair, who puts it home. 21 for Dewan Blair to go with 19 boards. Rebound Wanamaker. And the Notre Dame foul. That's on Hillsland, his third eighth on the Irish. 
Two more road games ahead for Notre Dame this week at Cincinnati, which beat Georgetown recently, and then at UCLA, and then they come home to play Louisville. South Florida and West Virginia as well. You know, West Virginia is not going to be easy. Obviously, we know what Louisville presents. And UCLA out there, holy cow. I think Mike Gray wants to go back and rethink the scheduling stuff. And I misspoke before. I said I, I added Seton Hall as part of those ranked teams, and they're not. But still, out of those last seven, they played Georgetown, Louisville, Syracuse, Connecticut, Marquette, and now Pittsburgh, with Seton Hall kind of sandwiched in there. And it's just been a tough road that's not, as you mentioned, not getting any easier. You know, we talked earlier about whether Pittsburgh can be a national title contender. Well, today they've got five guys in double figures, and Sam Young is not one of them. So they've got a lot of guys who can score. As Blair commits a foul on Heron Goat, he's second on Blair in the sixth. Well, you know, Len, earlier you told me you would not wear that Arizona Cardinals hat, but I'll tell you, if you get a haircut from Tyrell Biggs, you wouldn't have to because it looked beautiful. As uh, Biggs is the team barber, here he is working on student assistant Austin Wallace. Yeah, I guess he could probably put one of those Steelers emblems in my head. <laughs> Maybe next time. Not saying your hair is not good now, but I mean, if Biggs got to work on it. You'd be the envy of Steve Lavin, certainly. <laughs> Dixon breaks pressure, takes it, and finds Blair. Couldn't score, but went to work again. Committed the foul, though. His third, seventh on Pittsburgh. Juan Blair with 20 rebounds now in the game to go with 21 points. And 20 rebounds ties a personal best for the sophomore from here in Pittsburgh. He's got a 7 2 wingspan, stands 6 feet 7 inches tall. And it's that wingspan, you know, you give a couple inches here and there. Doesn't make nearly the difference that your reach makes. And so, you know, people talk about guys who get measured, oh, he's only 6'8 instead of 6'10. Those two inches make little difference by comparison to his reach. Blair, one of only three players this year to have a 20 20 game. One of the other ones is Blake Griffin of Oklahoma, who leads the nation in rebounding. Another Notre Dame foul. Well, Dwan Blair says his favorite player, even though he says he patterns his game after Charles Barkley, his favorite player is Shaquille O'Neal, recently named to the Western Conference All-Star team, a resurgence for Shaq. And Blair having a terrific season for Pittsburgh, which appears on its way to its 19th win in 21 games. Field there, he free throw. there he is, dipping it home. How can you not get him on the back? Take a look at his grandmother and the rest of the family cheering section. Pittsburgh continuing to foul and let Notre Dame get some points at the line. The Blair family celebrating today. They're certainly hopeful to celebrate tomorrow night. We'll see in Super Bowl 43 when the Steelers take on Arizona and the Blair family, huge Pittsburgh Steeler fans. You know, talking with some of uh, the folks around town, they're actually people who can't get tickets to the game that live elsewhere that will fly into Pittsburgh to watch the Super Bowl at a hotel just so they can do it here in Pittsburgh with other Steeler fans. Well, a huge party scheduled at the Blair House for the Super Bowl. Fields calls a timeout. And they know it on TV. There you go. Blair with 23 points, 21 rebounds. Pitts put up 51 points as a team in the second half. Let's take a look at what the Panthers have coming up. Step out of conference to play Robert Morris, then have to fall. And then West Virginia, Cincinnati at home. And then February 16th on a Monday night, big Monday at Connecticut. Wow. What a matchup that'll be. Yeah, they need to use those games as, as tune-ups. The three games at home, you know, obviously the, the type of play that place that uh, Pittsburgh would like to be able to kind of establish themselves before they meet Connecticut. And Notre Dame and giving up 90 points is in keeping with what they've done in the conference. 15th in points allowed, 13th in field goal percentage defense. 
they just had a difficult time stopping some folks and you combine that with them being normally a, a pretty tough offensive team not being able to score the way they'd like. Aaron Gody with a hard foul on fields. With the first foul on Heron Gody. And good sportsmanship Heron Gody helps fields up off the deck. But you got to play hard man that's what it comes down to. He just misses the deflection and then tries to the block. Good intentions nothing untoward and as I said helps him off the deck. Coming up next, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M. Ron Franklin, Fran Fischella will have the call. That's the 10th team foul on Notre Dame, so Pitt will shoot two the rest of the way. Have you made your Super Bowl pick yet, by the way? Yeah, I did Thursday night. You did? Who did you pick? You don't want to hear this. I go with defense. Defense wins championships. So, so who are you picking then? As Heron Goaty's foul. <laughs> the team known for defense. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. By the way, I get to take nothing, you know, to, to take nothing away from the Cardinals. But, you know, I, I'm going with the defense, the established defense. Cardinal defense is pretty tough, too. I mean, if you can put those points on the board and offensively like they did against Philadelphia, they have a chance. Yeah. But I just don't think Philadelphia has the same defense as Pittsburgh, and obviously that's proven. Cardinals are uh, plus nine in the postseason giveaway takeaway and 12 takeaways, so their defense has played well. You know, I give Digger a lot of credit. He sat there while Coach Knight and Billis and even Hubert, my boy, picked Pittsburgh, but I give Digger credit there for stepping up. And if they win, Len, maybe we'll send him a, a red tie and a, uh, a red marker to go along with it. Yeah, but, but Digger picked Dewey to beat Truman, so what the heck, what do we care? Hills <laughs> <laughs> Land picks up the foul is fourth. Some more free throws for Pittsburgh, but the Panthers are not a good free throw shooting team. They're 12th in the conference in that category. 15 of 23, 65%. That's right at their season average. And Dixon missed the first one. He's a 61% shooter. Notre Dame not done yet with its ability to hit threes, but only one made triple in the second half after 11 first half threes. And 91 points now for the Panthers. Ties a season high. Fields right in the grill of Macrolarney, and he's off the mark with that three. Rebound, Dixon. Pittsburgh able to take time off without getting fouled, and right here, Notre Dame trying to foul. They just can't get to him. And now Wanamaker is grabbed by Ayers. Wanamaker, a 69% free throw shooter, will go to the line for two. Don't forget Oklahoma State, Texas A&M coming up next. That these Pittsburgh fans reading tea leaves right now. It's all over. Even though there's still 40.6 left. Jamie Dixon trying to get 19th win of the season for the Panthers. They started 16 and 0. They were number one for a couple of weeks. Right third. They might slip a few spots after losing to Villanova this week. But a good bounce back today against Notre Dame. McAlarney, no. Blair the rebound. And it is now indeed all over. And Notre Dame loses its fifth straight game. <laughs> 23 points, 22 rebounds for Dewan Blair. He'll take a seat on his couch tomorrow night to watch his favorite team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, play in Super Bowl 43. And he'll do it with a smile on his face. As he wins the battle with Luke Heron Gody and most importantly wins the battle against Notre Dame for his squad to go to 7 and 2 in the Big East and 19 and 2 overall. Pittsburgh 93, Notre Dame 80 is the final from the Peterson Event Center. Oklahoma State, Texas A&M from the Big 12 up next with Ron Franklin and Fran Fraschilla for Len Elmore, our entire crew. Dave Pash saying so long from Pittsburgh. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Notre Dame has lost five in a row. Pittsburgh beats the Irish 93 to 80 as we go back to the studio now in Darinoka.
All right, Dave, enjoy the Super Bowl. Good luck to your Cardinals. Meanwhile, James Anderson, one of four Cowboys, scoring at least 13 a game. He leads everybody with 17 a game. Oklahoma State getting ready to hit Reed Arena, trying to take out Texas A&M. It's a big one in the Big 12, and that game is next in just minutes, as you can see. Meanwhile, Tom Brennan uh, sitting here with me, and we just saw Notre Dame. 11 for 22 in the first half. They had a lead at the break at Pittsburgh. And then they come out and they go one for three until the final minute of the second half. From Why would you change what clearly worked so well or how much of it is just Pittsburgh's defense? Yeah, it's not so much why would yeah. you change. It's that Pittsburgh decided that they were going to change. In the first half, they decided to double Heron Goaty early and make sure uh, that other Notre Dame players are going to beat him. Zeller did a great job, but in the second half, Pitt came out on fire. They played everybody straight up. We're going to give no easy three-point plays. And the momentum took over, and Blair was just absolutely unbelievable. Sam Young got hot, and it was KDA by the door at that point. Yeah, and Pittsburgh goes on a huge second half. Notre Dame, they were knocking in threes was Pittsburgh. They were getting buckets inside, and they were putting the clamps on Notre Dame uh, on the defensive side. And now Notre Dame's lost five in a row. They are three and six in conference play. Once in the top ten, you look at their next five games. I mean, this is a nasty, nasty stretch. Maybe the exception is the game at home against South Florida, but... Notre Dame is in trouble. If you've got to go 9-9, nine and nine, say, to get in, 9-9 nine and nine in the Big East to get in the dance, that means Notre Dame has to go 6-3 and three the rest of the way. Yeah. Uh, that's not easy to do. And not to mention, let's go play UCLA just for fun, just to see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's really what they're looking forward just to for now. Fun. But really, they have to go to West Virginia. They have to go to UConn. Uh, there's another big one out there somewhere, too. So they're really in a lot Providence, of trouble right I now. Think, yeah. Yes, at Providence. Yeah. So there's nothing easy. Nasty stretch for Notre Dame coming up, and they are all must-wins at this point for Mike Bray's team. Meanwhile, also uh, early games this afternoon. We want to show you what's happened. How about Wake Forest and Georgia Tech? Wake Forest, of course, knocked off number one Duke on Wednesday. Georgia Tech 0-6 in conference play, 9-10 overall. They've lost five in a row, yet they are down by just one in the closing minutes. And remember, the last time George, uh, Wake Forest beat a number one team, they lost the next game. That's a very good point. So look out here, Georgia Tech with a chance late in Atlanta. Meanwhile, how about Massachusetts and Xavier? The Musketeers, nine straight wins, 19 straight home wins against A-10 teams. This one has not been easy. Uh, it's a three-point game. Massachusetts is shooting free throws right now. Three seconds to go. Xavier actually fouled Massachusetts on an inbounds. A smart play in not allowing them to shoot a three-point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, Xavier is very tested and playing at home. And a uh, couple good wins for UMass. This would have been a great one, yeah. but doesn't look like it's going to be. Yeah, it's not looking good for them as they are at the line. That came over on ESPNU. Coming up right now on ESPN2, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M to Reed Arena we go.